Okay, let's take two on all this. <laughs> all right, here we go. This is for you new people. I only have one rule. Everyone fights, no one quits. If you don't do your job, I'll shoot you. Ladies and gentlemen. The movie you're about to see is in the far as there is no story and no plot. It all sounds like some bad movie. <laughs> Welcome to the Miscellaneous Movies. How's everybody doing? Well, I'm hey, having hey. a lovely night. I'm doing all right. Technical difficulties was ruining this time, man. Now all this modern technology, and it's still going to go wrong for all the conveniences it provides. It will provide just as many inconveniences. That's Very true. true. Very true. Yeah. So let's see what we got here. We have Starship Troopers. Happy Veterans Day, everyone. Yeah, happy, happy Veterans, Veterans Day. Day. Veterans Day. So me and uh me and Cato, we've been we were working on this for actually for a while. Me and him had we we were discussing this over what appeared a couple days. And yeah. we're we were trying to figure out what good movie we could use for Veterans Day. And we know now, like, oh well, we know that like a lot of the other podcasts are doing the, the, the more serious ones like fury and Cy saving private Ryan's and Dunkirk and all that other stuff. So I was just kind of like, we got to figure something out. We got, we got to do something. And at first I was like, what about a show where we just talked all about all of them? But he was like, you know, no, because you know, this kind of doesn't really give it uh, each one you know, it's, it's proper, you know, respect or whatever. Well, and I was like, yeah, I, yeah, right. yeah. And, and so it was funny because me and him are like doing this and, and they just bantering back and forth. That's why I really, really love like when we do this uh, with me and Cato, cause like we had the nice, like little back and forth, you know, with the semantic arguments and stuff like that to keep it <laughs> going. And I really loved it. We, we had nothing <laughs> after a couple of days. We were like, and it's it, it just, it just we just didn't know what we were gonna do. And um, I get a call from Norco Killer. He's another guy on the show. And I was telling him what would you do or whatever. And that's when he just goes, Buenos Aires, a million people killed by that. And I was like, Oh my God, Starship Troopers! And then it yeah, just clicked. I, I never thought of Starship Troopers as a veterans movie. I mean, it obviously is, but like I'm sitting here like, oh. Like, okay, should we go Vietnam or World War Two? And then there's like so many movies to pick from that you're lost. Yeah. I mean, my original plan was to do Heartbreak Ridge. And I oh, might excellent do... movie. Yeah, ex ex yes. <laughs> I, I, but... I kind of thought like maybe like the remake of Inglorious Bastards, since we were kind of wanting to do more lighthearted than serious. Tarantino did do a really good job with the remake. And of course, you got critics out there that are like, oh, it's not historically accurate. Well, it's not supposed to be. Same thing with like Zack Snyder and 300 getting torn apart. It's based off of a, like 300 was based off of a graphic novel. It was not intended to be historically accurate. It's basically a comic book movie. Mm -hmm. You should know what you're getting into yeah. when you're going to watch a Tarantino movie. Now, Starship Troopers is, it was a comic book back in the 50s or 40s or somewhere. I forgot where I looked it up at. But yeah, it used to be, it got turned into a movie. And, uh, but this is one thing I was like, I like. Every day, federal scientists are looking for new ways to kill bugs. Your basic arachnid warrior isn't too smart, but you can blow off a limb. It's still 86% combat effective. Here's a tip. Aim for the nerve stem and put it down for good. Would you like to know more? <laughs> Every day, federal... <laughs> I love the would you like to know more guy. Were you guys able to hear the YouTube video? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Okay, good. Came through nice and clear. So, here we go. This is coming straight from IMDb. So, in the not-too-distant future from Earth, governed by the m material... Well, with mil fuck this. Okay, let's talk about our own version of the scenario, okay? I don't get this militarized, 
high school life of the earth. What did you guys think of this? Well, like, um, let, let me throw this at you. What, what genre do you think this movie is? Because a lot of people are, uh, they're, they're actually mistaken. They get the wrong impression. What genre do you think this is? This is like fantasy sci-fi, right? That's face value. The movie is actually a dark comedy. The movie is a satire on far right, extreme fascist, uh, you know, uh, societies. Like you notice, like people in the movie, you don't have freedoms. You have to join the military to be free and mm. to become a citizen. And even then it's, it's like limited freedoms. And like, in the very first scene in the classroom, the teacher is giving a lecture about why violence solves more problems than democracy. And a lot of people watch the movie because, you know, it's like you go to see a bug killing space movie. You're expecting something like Aliens. And that's kind of like the, what you go in to watch it for. And it's entertaining as hell. But it, every but like all the stuff that like all the dialogue, everything that they're saying, it's like the story was written as a critique and a warning against like being too violent in a society and being too like controlling and, you know, having like uh, a government, like taking away your freedoms. Yeah. I yeah. see like, a yeah. lot of people miss the overall message of the movie. And I think that's why I got so much hate when it initially came out is that nobody really understood it. They're just like, Oh, it's, it's just, they took it at face value and they didn't see that it really exactly what it was is that like, like you were saying that it's a satire. It's supposed to be basically taking a shot at fascism and a completely militant and militarized government and people. And they miss that. And I think that's why a lot of it and a lot of original viewers, when it first hit the theaters, mistook the message of the movie like what it was actually getting at and why now was it like 28 30 years later that it's gained a cult following of people that actually took the time to fully understand the message the movie was making and now it's got this huge underground fan base around it no oh, yeah exactly. yeah you're right because i didn't see this in the theater in fact it tanked so bad in the theater worldwide was the only way it made up for for its cost. It yeah, costed then 100 it a, and then it got a cult following after the fact. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, what was it? Was um the first movie that that's happened with. Um the one movie especially with us just getting out of October, the Rocky Horror Picture Show uh was a flop. Yeah. Box office wise. And now argue semantic on it, the the Broadway was amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that was popular as hell in in London, but yeah, when the movie came out, well, I did not know that was a flop. Oh, um, interesting thing that you guys might not be aware of, uh, with Starship Troopers, um, one of the things that they were going for was the movie is a propaganda film. Yeah, because yeah. the entire storyline, every plot twist that they put in there is all to get you to feel sympathy for what the the uh, government is doing. However, if you really look at the uh, psychology that's in use, it's uh, also kind of poking fun at the brainwashing that propaganda films do. Because if you really pay attention, humans are the aggressors through this entire film. Um, the bugs are just retaliating against our attacks on them. Well, but the film shot, is not like, a yeah. that but, but who shot first, though? Because all you see in the movie mm -hmm. is see, when Buenos Aires gets like rocked by those rocks. See, right? That's because you're paying attention to what the movie's showing you, but not what it's telling you. Because like when you're watching those newscasts and there's like an expert arguing about the bugs being dumb and stuff, and and then you hear like the calm person quietly saying, "Well, like they didn't start doing anything until we started like 
going into their planets to colonize them and started eradicating them. And that's when they became active and started attacking. Buenos Aires was a result of us going to their planets and trying to exterminate them so we could colonize their worlds. Exactly. And that's the propaganda part of the film that makes you see it through the humans are the good guys instead of realizing that the bugs are just trying to defend themselves. Right. In Starship yeah. Troopers, the bugs are the rebels and the soldiers, they're just like caught up in the war. Yep. There's another scene that uh, I want to bring to attention. Um, uh, how fresh is the movie in your guys' minds? All right, hold on. I, I want to play this. I want to play this. Infantry, sir. Good for you. Mobile infantry made me the man I am today. Okay. The, the triple quadriplegic. Yeah. So <laughs> what I'm saying is, is that you have like. You know, adding to what you were saying, it's like it's all propaganda, yeah. But then you have those things where you're kind of like, huh? So I, well, I don't know. Exactly. That's the that's the sales pitch, and then him wheeling away, and like you see in his missing arm and legs. That that's like the reality. It's like it's you know it's they're like trying to indoctrinate everybody. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. it, like when you're watching the movie. Each, like most of the cutaways and transitions are propaganda commercials that start hitting you, like pro-military, pro-government, you know? Mm -hmm. Support the war. Here's a Fight song the about bugs. Ronnie Paper Towel. Yeah, Stand wrong tall. thing. Commercials. I hate commercials. <laughs> the only good oh, yeah, bug the... is a dead bug. Rico. Oh, yeah. Rico! for the kids? Stomping on. on the roaches. Pay attention. Yeah. yeah. But here's like the argument they were talking about in Let's school. Let's sum up. This year we explored the failure of democracy. While the social scientists brought our world to the brink of chaos. We talked about the veterans. How they took control. And imposed the stability that has lasted for generations since. You know these facts. But have I taught you anything of value this year? Hmm? You. Why are only citizens allowed to vote? It's a reward. What the Federation gives you for doing federal service. No. No. Something given has no value. Look, when you vote, you are exercising political authority. You're using force. And force, my friends, is violence. The supreme authority from which all other authority is derived. That's just... Hearing this was like, when you're watching the movie, you didn't care. Because you wanted to see what the kids were doing, Absolutely. who were like all... Dawson cast, by the way, they're like thirty-year-olds playing high schoolers. But oh my god! It, All right, you 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 said Dawson's referring to Dawson's Creek, right? No, they call it Dawson casting, and it was coined during Dawson's Creek, where everyone was what you could tell were too old to be high schoolers. But they did Dawson casting since you know whenever you know. Did you notice how like everybody in the movie? Uh, has names like Rico, Carmen, Fl uh, Flores, but like Aren't they supposed the to be like cast... in Buenos Aires and shit, right? Exactly. Like they, like the cat, like the characters. None of oh, them so are they're... Caucasian. None so of they're them. All... <laughs> so they're all supposed to be like <laughs> like Latino they're... and shit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Racist. <laughs> oh God. Oh, what? I, no, I did not know. Okay. Do you guys uh, ever watch the TV show Psych? Yes. Uh, I have not. The detective yeah, I didn't know he episodes. was in the movie. Fully automatic burrito. Who wants to hold it? Citizen rule. People making a better tomorrow. I don't the kids play with loaded guns. <laughs> Would you like to know more? A murderer was captured this morning and tried today. Guilty. You think you're psychic? Maybe you are. Okay. So the next example, what you're talking about, Angelus, all the things like when they're when they're smacking down, they're stomping on the roaches, and so that they were already well, at like war with these bugs. Kids. But with the roaches, things like after Buenos Aires was hit, 
Or was it before? I forgot. I think it was before because they were still building up to uh, him enlisting in the service at that point. Wow. Um, and he was about to leave the service when when Osiris gets hit. And he was going to yeah. go. And yeah. he was on the phone with his parents when... Because uh, that's when what's his face, uh, the guy who looked like Peyton Manning got like dinged in the face, right? Yeah, <laughs> that was a rough scene. <laughs> I, I love stupid. that the guy that looked like Peyton Manning. <laughs> <laughs> he did to me, man. <laughs> oh shit! But uh, and then you know you just got uh, Neil Patrick Harris in there walking around, basically dressed as a Nazi SS not, officer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> all their all their uniforms, like even their little winged sigil, it's meant to like mimic the like uh, Nazi eagle. Yeah, and mm-hmm. it's got that same shape of uniform. Even like uh, the bars on uh, the on their shoulders are are lightning bolts. Like, yeah, <laughs> just like the SS. Yeah, it's like like a little well, on the nose, you know. What's it, Sean Patrick Flair. I mean Neil Pat. What's his, Neil Patrick Harris? He, he if you look he starts losing weight he gets sunken in eyes like he it, it most people are like it's because he was working overtime and i'm like yeah it look, makes him look creepy as fuck now with this hitler you know nazi coat on but we, we gotta talk about clancy brown though he okay there's a lot of good actors in this fuck all the relationships in the girl and the dude we got Busey's kid clancy brown Second favorite Busey. Yep. And um the fucking the great teacher, whatever his name is, I forgot his name. But um I mean those would, those uh, to me made the movie way the fuck better, you know? Without him, I don't know. Michael Ironside. Yeah. His uh, his his name is is his real name is better than uh Gene Razak. <laughs> that that's what his name is in the movie. But yeah, Michael Ironside <laughs> would have been a cooler, cooler name. Yeah. But I, again, I don't think that character was meant to be Caucasian either. <laughs> now, you guys heard of the uh, the conspiracy theory between Ca- uh, um, uh, with Casper Van Dien, right? The guy who played Rico, Rico Squadron. Oh, you no, I haven't heard that? that. Have you ever seen the movie Romeo Plus Juliet with Leonardo DiCaprio? Yes. All right, there's a scene. Yeah where this kid is at the gas station and uh, they're having that that shootout in the very beginning. Um, Let me see if I can pull it up real quick. But it's uh, it's Romeo plus is great for radio. Uh, Uh, Where's the scene? Is it here? Yeah, here it is. This is when they're... Why did I draw on among these? You guys remember the scene at all? Hines. It's a minute. Turn probably. the portfolio. And look upon thy death. All right, this little kid comes up. I do, but keep the peace. Because I hate hell. Where did it go? Where did it go? Ah, fuck it. Okay, there was a scene right there before there where this little kid comes up and goes, bang, 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 bang. And, um... What's his face? This goes bang. Um, that kid had icy blue eyes. Let me see if I can pull him up real quick. But they said that was Casper Van Dien as a kid, right? Mm-hmm. That came out in 1996, and then in 1997 he was Casper Van Dien, like we see him. So that was the whole uh, conspiracy theory on that one. <laughs> okay, never mind then. No, no, I had never heard of yeah, that. I, yeah, I've never heard of that. It's a kind of weird. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. that's why it's a conspiracy theory. So let's talk about some Clancy Brown, though, man. You know, Mr. Shawshank Redemption himself, right? That's the movie you associate now, with him. Now, now, correct me if I'm wrong. He is, in fact, the voice actor for Mr. Krabs. Yeah. Yes, he is. <laughs> <sighs> oh, that is true. 
This is kind of a dead crowd today. Come on, guys, liven this up. We need. We're doing this for veterans. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, like no. That, well, okay, then let's do some modern media comparison. To uh, we'll I'll harken <laughs> back to the scene with the, uh, with the crippled soldier saying, you know, the mobile infantry, good for you. They made me the man I am today. I feel like the filmmakers intentionally included that side character as a plot device to yeah. make you feel sympathetic and in a far lesser, you know, less propaganda style, you do actually see, you know, modern veterans go to like, uh, they do it to, for, uh, what is it like the wounded warriors project, things like that. You'll have these veterans that have unfortunately, you know, suffered these catastrophic injuries, but they're put on TV to make you feel bad. So you donate more. Yeah. And in a similar sense, yeah. they did do that in the movie to make you feel sympathetic of the humans, even though, in fact, they were the aggressors. We were trying to colonize their planets and eradicate an entire species. Yeah, but see, well, I didn't I didn't know that until you guys were talking about it. even even when uh, we kept watching it over and over again. I really didn't look at that like at that till, till this thing, because you have that and then you have like, uh, let, let's keep going down the line right here, because what, what was it shortly after that when he talked about trying to join up? because you had to get your citizenship, they all played the ridiculously high-impact football game where they looked like they were um, hockey players. Did you see that? Who the fuck yeah. does a flip to catch a ball? That's badass. Well, like, uh, I don't know. Got to get the style points. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe. Gotta get that they, were, they, were, they were playing on a gymnasium floor, too. So that, <laughs> Jesus, that could yeah, and, and the field was like a even half the size of arena football and arena football is only played on like 45 yard long fields. Mm -hmm. Now, wasn't the, 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 the hotshot pilot, wasn't he on the other team or yes. am I not remember? Okay. Yeah. He was, yes, he okay. was, he was, he was on the other team. That's why he was trying to tackle Rico. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> hey, later on, I get my brain sucked out by a huge vagina with a weird That's... stick in the middle of it. <laughs> I, know, I always thought the brain bug's mouth kind of looked more like a butthole, like yeah. just the way it looks. You know what I mean? <laughs> to me, it just looks like a fucked up. Yeah, yeah, it's got the but really big, puffy, round. We just agree that it is a disturbing, a disturbing yeah. image for some form of orifice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, um, because I've seen uh, quite a, a handful of orifices myself. Never quite been disgusted by one before. Wow, you never sat there and were picking at some dude's ass and go, hey, that looks like the fucking bug off of blow up. No, no. <laughs> um, if that ever I happened. watch live vaginal deliveries that did not look as weird as that brain bug's mouth. Dude, I'm, oh. thank you. It's not like you can sit there and be like, I'm going to eat that. No, that's not going to happen. Sorry. <laughs> so, the, okay, the citizenship was why they were graduating, right? They had to pick yeah. a military base. They, so how is it that, that the score low? Yeah, it was all based on scoring. Because Rico yeah, if you scored high ass. enough or it's like, yeah, if you scored 100 percent, they knew like you had to be a pilot or what, no, no, that's or what you were uh, a pilot or a Prince, psychic. Yeah, that's what Freddie Prince Jr. I mean, uh, Ron, what's his name? Neil Patrick Harris. Patrick was. Harris. Yeah, just, you know, Dookie House. Why was so, the Scooby-Doo cast? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember name. Matthew Lillard in this film. You know what? You know what? You know what freaked me out? I never knew he was gay until what? Five, ten years ago? Neil you Patrick Harris? Gator? And huh? You don't have a gator? No, I, I'm ambivalent to these things. I'm just like, oh, OK. okay. Yeah. I guess I have to let you know. I too am a homosexual. Oh my god! <laughs> Paul, Paul's mind is shattered. It, it, yeah, yeah, I know, right? But no, it, you know I know I'm saying there's a... hilarious, his character on How I Met Your Mother is such a womanizer. I'm like, yeah, the gay man, a woman. <laughs> well, that's, that's why it's so funny. But now, isn't it like? In Will and Grace, wasn't it like the opposite? It wasn't like Jack, but Jack's gay in real life too, right? Just Jack, yeah. Sean, yeah, Sean, uh, Who isn't, and but Jack is okay. So the other guy isn't. I thought he was. Uh, uh, well, yeah, it was like yeah. Is so Will 
it's straight in real life. Okay, okay. I knew there was like a flip flop or something or something like that. Yeah. Oh, uh, um. <laughs> so they, so they, you know uh, the character Beverly Leslie on Will and Grace. Uh, Beverly, that's the the drinking Leslie one, right? Huh? Leslie Jordan's character. Leslie Jordan, the one that passed away recently, right? Yeah. Yeah. What about him? Uh, j- six degrees of separation. I worked on some stuff with Equality Illinois. Okay. And he uh, was active in a chat that I was hosting. Oh, wow. Uh, I love him. He's awesome. Thing, yeah. Uh, during the event, and he said some stuff to the event, but I'm the one that was talking to him. So I, I hmm. talked, kind of had that little bit of a connection with him. So whenever Celebrity. he died, it kind of hit me because it's like, oh, that's yeah. as a celebrity as I've ever come. Yeah, I loved him in Boston Legal, Will and Grace and everything. Did they ever say what happened to him, what kind of medical event he was having when he uh, hit the wall? <laughs> I, I didn't hear, but I don't watch TV very much. So I usually uh, am the last to find out. Well, let's get back to Casper Vandini. So he can only get into the Army, right? And Mobile infantry. It, mobile yeah, infantry. Yeah. And they make it sound like that's like the shittiest of the shittiest, right? Because I know when where when when I was in, leaving high school, you know that all the recruiters come up to you and they were like the Marines are the most like shittiest ones, and then it was Army and then whatever and so on. And Air Force is the best because that that's how my dad labeled it. I mean that that's that's what I'm saying. But I don't know. I I, I never when I saw the mobile infantry and and when they go start doing the basic training and everything like that. I was like, this is cool as shit. Like, this sounds like this is like fun stuff. I want to do this. Playing some violin out of nowhere, you know, shit like that. Dancing around and shit. But, um, yeah, so like, what do you I think, think it be- I, well, I, I was I just going to say, I think the reason they, the mobile infantry, like everybody was like, no, don't go mobile infantry is because they're the ones that are going to die uh, yeah, facing the yeah, bugs. They're, they're, they're the ones the that are like, yeah. yeah, they're facing the arachnids, you know, boom, right there. You mm-hmm. better shoot fast or you're just dead or you're yeah. missing an arm or a leg or you're going to get drugged back to the brain bug. And mm, yeah, you're a snack. <laughs> that orifice is going to fuck you up. Yeah. So um, but, <laughs> with its so, very weird for <laughs> Now, Now that we're talking about like since it's been brought up, um, what do you think of the women? Now, is this like the Twilight casting where like she's supposed to like the main character is supposed to be prettier? Than the than the off character, but in Twilight, the other character was you know the the supporting chick was hotter than um, the Twilight girl because I like the red haired curly haired one that gets naked and shit than the the one that dumped him. Now was that supposed um, to be made that way or? Well, I, are you? I don't know if you're supposed to like the girl that literally leaves like the dude who was simping for her. For the guy, the one guy he can't stand. <laughs> it's like, he oh, finds, yeah. How small of yeah, a Carmen was there. definitely. Oh yeah, Carmen, Carmen was definitely was playing on the on the petty card. And then I'm trying to remember the uh, the other character's name. Xander. I, I, I like how. Um, what are you talking about? The red haired. Oh no, girl? not Xander. The yeah, the red haired girl. I'm trying to remember. Uh, that is Dizzy Flores. Dizzy Flores. Yeah. Yeah. But I, you know, I love how like, you know, he, uh, Casper Dean, he was up, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to join, uh, the mobile infantry. And she's like, okay, bye. Phew, just takes off. <laughs> it's like, dude, dude, just stop, man. She doesn't like you like that. You know, like you, they're, you're pretty clear on, yeah, this chick doesn't dig you. But uh, who did you like in the movie? Who, what? I was asking, uh, Z- uh, is it Zerinity? Am I saying it right? You can just call me Angel. All right, that works. Angel, who do you like in the movie? Um, or who is the least gross? <laughs> well, I'm trying to think of his name. Um, the guy who becomes uh the kind of jarhead guy that becomes uh the like the team lead after the guy gets killed in the active fire simulation. Uh, Jake Busey. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Because then Ace. later on, he's like, you know, I don't want to be in charge. I just want to shoot. 
things. <laughs> mm-hmm. Layla, I just one, I think he's cute. I like that muscle man mentality. But I also think he's super real because he's like, I, I'm just part of the horde. I, I'm not wanting to be pull out. I just mm-hmm. I, I don't need to be leadership. I just want to uh, do what I think is right. And no one likes know, dudes he, that pull out. Yeah. Sorry. I knew somebody was going to catch that faux pas. <laughs> Here we go. They go to basic training and you get stuff like this. Ah! 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 It's a knife in a nuke fight anyway. All you got to do is push a button. Yeah. Sir. Cease fire. Put your hand on that wall, trooper. I love this scene. Put your hand on that wall. <laughs> I hear it. Make sure to make it sound extra meaty. <laughs> the enemy cannot push a button if you disable the Dropping a whopper on a cutting board. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oof. That's the best thing. And then, like, the girl, when she gets washed out, and the one that calls him stupid. Yeah, because I'm stupid. And, like, I love the way when they shoot uh, Peyton Manning. <laughs> He's just... Dar. You know, I just know it. Oh, this is wrong. You don't gotta keep and then Rico's just standing there. Oh no, then like the camera just zooms in on Rico's face and he's just like oh, over the top acting like and oh, then he just yeah. goes and then he's just like <laughs> and it, the like the music is going all cinematic and just completely over the top. Mm-hmm. It's good. It's, oh my god. He's like, it's just like, out call a medic, bro. like his brain is on the ground. You he doesn't need a medic, he needs a mop. Yeah. <laughs> I like how Mark wore with that. When he doesn't need a medic, he needs a mop. Clean up <laughs> and seven. Thank you. Like he even got Don't shot. Forget like the caution wet floor signs. Like he got in trouble yeah. for taking the helmet off, but he was shot in the face too. So it's like, yeah. well, that would the, the bullet would have still hit there, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's like well, maybe a mulligan. It wouldn't have taken so long to clean up. Now, what? Now we were talking all about earlier about the propaganda and all of this stuff. Well, I don't know if this has to do with anything, but so the original is a it was a fantasy sci fi magazine called Starship Soldier back in nineteen fifty nine. So, do you think that has anything to do with the the whole overly you know propaganda stuff? I don't know, but yeah, it started off to be a two part series in a magazine. There you go. That's what became. Well, you know, what, uh, well, you know in 1959, it you know everybody was just ge- like they were gearing up because we didn't know what the Russians were doing. The arms race mm-hmm. was on. The Cold War was in full swing. We were either still in the middle of fighting in Korea, or we were just getting ready to leave, and everything like that. So, and it was, it was really commonplace still back then. I mean, you watch these old Looney Tunes and Disney cartoons from back during world war two and you got Daffy duck or no Donald duck. My bad. You got Donald duck, uh, literally rowing a rowboat across a little stream on a Japanese Island and shooting these very racially profiling drawn Japanese soldiers. And Oh Yeah. And so I think maybe the film was intentionally done to match the almost like propagandic style that it would have been written in. Like maybe the entire thing was done as an allegory for like, just whoever we were fighting at that point. Because, you know, as Americans, we're we're going to fight somebody. Somebody's catching these hands regardless. Mm. <laughs> It was such an all-star cast in this movie. Breaking Bad. Everybody loved Breaking Bad, right? Y'all seen Breaking Bad? No, the, I the FBI I... guy. He's like the head of he's Clancy's uh boss. So okay, why did um oh yeah, he was the acting captain at the time. Rico, yeah. right? All right, now this he's is what I did later. like. Yeah, yeah. It was given like a field promotion by Rezik or Damn, I forget his character's Zim. name all the time. Zim. Clancy Brown's Zim- character, Sergeant Zim. Yeah, Clancy Brown, yeah. So this is where you get, first get your uh, idea of what 
Clancy Brown was really like when he's getting beat. Remember that scene? Where he's getting punished and he's getting lashed. Oh, yeah. Not Clancy Brown. That's uh, Rico. That's getting the meat. Yeah. Ouch. So right when he I says know. first, like, really big, like, Clancy Brown moment that, like, this guy is badass because he's like, bite down on this. Trust me. I know. It works. <laughs> so that's when he already started getting that Clancy is a uh, bad. I was going to call him Clancy instead of, what's his name? Zippy? Them. What's his name? Zim? Zippy. Oh. <laughs> I've heard it both ways. <laughs> oh, no. <clears throat> but... Well, no, no. So I may have heard you say you go with both ways. I said I've heard it both you ways. Things about Paul. <laughs> so they decide to go over there and kill some bugs. Now, this is the part I like too. I like how we have the big thing with the roughnecks and all the you know the the mobile infantry unit, and then it cuts to this beautiful setting on a starship, where you know they're all like you know dudes all like. Yeah, you know, you can get in trouble for uh, going through here all fast and stuff. <laughs> you know, you're so that that crap. And, you know, you're like, this is getting stupid. Now, did she she already broke up with him at the time, right? Because didn't yeah. she break up with him like in uh, yeah. the middle of basic train, basic train? She broke up with him right after she got on the bridge and seen that Xander was her like superior helping her, her navigator. Yeah. Like right after she met, like, oh, you're here. That's when she sent that. I just don't think this is going to work out. Yep. Video message. Yeah. She's like, oh, yeah. And she's just like, oh, Rico, you know, I'm sorry, uh, but you're mobile infantry and I'm a pilot and it, it can't work. We're separated, but like in the caste system of the military. And I'm just like, no, Carmen, like you petty. Mm -hmm. And like, and, you, and then like, I'm sorry, Dizzy, uh, you're like, dude. Built a new girlfriend right there, hot as hell. There you go. But he's like, oh you, my god, you share co-ed showers. I know, right? I mean, that was oh my god. Now, but I do have to say, Dizzy had some real saggy titties, though. I mean, that was the first time I ever really saw saggy titties before when I first because we watched this in the movie theater, and all our friends went to go see it, and I was just like, huh, not what I thought, but still, good times, you know. <laughs> okay. Yep. All quiet. You gotta find enjoyment in a movie somewhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, co-ed showers. And uh fun fact about this movie is the director had to get naked for that co-ed shower scene too. Uh Cameron Diaz, I mean uh Casper Van Dien and uh Dizzy and all them, uh they said we'll get buck naked if you get buck naked. So Gary Busey, or I'm sorry, what's his name? Jake Busey? He uh, made it a point to try to give him a hug after the scene was over with. There you go. I love the Buseys. He was a good sport about it, too. I mean, I would, too. I mean, that'd be kind of fun, you know? It really makes naked. me wish that uh, Brenda Strong was actually in the in the uh, uh, Roughnecks at that point. Not the Roughnecks, but Mobile Infantry. She was the <laughs> captain of the ship that uh, Carmen was on. You think she, she was, was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Huh. she was fucking cool. What else was she in? She was in a bunch of things, wasn't she? Well, she's in oh, Starship yeah. Troopers 2 as a different character. Yeah, but I'm trying to see... Uh, I've seen her in a lot of other things I'm trying to figure out. Oh, hey! She's in a lot of uh, sci-fi channel movies. The biology teacher was the girl from um, uh, the uh, Golden Girls. Oh, hmm. That reminds me of that scene. Remember when she's like since you brought it up, remember when she's like, uh, they're all dissecting bugs and she's talking about how humans aren't as advanced as we like to think we are. Mm -hmm. Did you notice how when she was talking about the bugs, she referred to them as the perfect citizens because they were too ah. stupid. They were too stupid to fear death and mm -hmm. they followed orders. Like that, that's like the kind of stuff that they were preaching to these kids in the school. Yeah. Yeah. Everything See, they was didn't all want about thinkers. They yeah. just wanted soldiers that yeah. were going to follow their orders and complete them to the best of their ability or die trying. Yeah. There is one more scene I wanted to bring up real quick, just because it's still touching on this topic, sort of. Uh, and it's it brings us back to the starships. Do you remember when they were approaching uh, the planet and they you see the uh, blue lights coming up? Yeah. 
Yeah, and they're hold like, on one oh, second. It's... Hold on. Hold on one second. We're going to get to that in a second. That chick you like, what's her name? The, the Captain Strong? What's her name? Uh, Brenda uh, Lee or something? Brenda Strong. Brenda Strong. Yeah, I figured out she's been in a lot of fucking shit. A lot. That's where I know her from. But yeah, she's hot. I, I would definitely say we need a, a shower scene with her. All right. So we're we're in the scene, right? Where the, the ship's going. The white poop is all coming up into space. Now go. Well, now earlier when uh, the meteor hit uh, Buenos Aires, the newscaster. That was rocks, right? Well, it was. Yeah, those giant artillery bugs, those like huge, almost like iridescent blue, shining like black beetles that they like you get to see a new yeah, one they, in a later poop. scene. Yeah, they yeah, they on. literally shoot this bio <laughs> that, like that, like that, that bioluminescent plasma out of their ass. That's but, not what hit though. But if Buenos Aires to... was rocks. Yeah, yeah it was well, a that, meteor that they used the plasma and they shot the meteor out of orbit and it somehow oh, managed to go on a perfect exactly. trajectory to Earth. To Buenos Aires. <laughs> Exactly. That's what I was about to say. Like that they use that plasma to basically kick one of those things towards the planet. Now, here is what's interesting. When that ship now, this is way this is after Buenos Aires, because Buenos Aires is when they is when they decided to launch this uh, campaign against them. Now, when they're coming up, they see this plasma. They already knew in the they even in the newscast they said that the, that the bugs used the plasma to launch these rocks towards Earth. It was in the newscast. They know that this plasma is dangerous. But when they're approaching, you hear the captain say, "Bug batteries. According to military intelligence, it'll be random and light." Yeah, it gets a why? defense mechanism, and then the ship gets rocked. Yeah, Do you know like why? Time. Intelligence told them that. Why? Because they wanted the casualties to be high enough to use all those soldiers and ships dying as propaganda to fuel the war against the bugs. What? Yep. What? That's just no. That's fucked up, dude. That's yep. No. Watching the movie from as an outside observer, you see the soldiers aren't being told everything that they yeah. need to be. They're not being given all the intelligence. Ah, uh -huh. ah. blow your mind right yeah they sent them in there the like they the, they sent all these rookies in there that barely had a year of training they weren't expecting them to win the fight they sent them out there to die yeah and then they be like follow, following the battle it's like a news camera panning across the you know the spaceship docking area and it's showing all these ships shot to hell oh, and missing engines that. like still burning yeah. and everything it's like a hundred thousand dead within the first hour of the attempted invasion on Kondathu. More casualties expected. I love the 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 camera guy when you talk about the camera guy. He's like, "Oh my god!" He just starts getting planet. eaten by a bug. <laughs> what? It's an ugly planet. A bug yeah. planet. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see. If Why do we want planet. it if it's an ugly bug planet? Just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Why is that? Like it. It. it you know. Starship Troopers takes a turn for the worst after a while, where you're just like, oh, here it is. Young people from all over the globe are joining up to fight for the future. I'm doing my part. Oh, I'm doing my part. Here's I'm your uh, part? killing the bugs thing. I'm yeah. My part, too. Yeah. <laughs> Skimming over the fact that there's literally a, a child soldier. Okay. Shit starts hitting the fan. You know, it, it it's getting worse. Everybody's getting down there. And is that when Rico gets the Luke Skywalker stabbed to the leg? Is that when that happens? Like they, they push on a little bit and then it happens a little bit after that. Because that yeah, was but he the definitely Luke takes Skywalker. one of the like the big spikes like right in the oh, leg. That looks so and they drag him back. Oh, yeah, that was just seeing that, you're like, oh, fuck that. And he got it out. I was like, no, hell no. That Rico can fuck some shit up, man. No. Mm -mm. I'm sorry. That would have destroyed his leg, man. It didn't. Yeah. But he had the Luke Skywalker scene being in the water, getting repaired, you know? So. 
Okay. And then you had Dizzy kiss the fucking thing because now she's like, yeah. What do you think about the tattoo, by the way? The laser tattoo. It says death. <laughs> that is cool. <laughs> Yeah, and, and it's always stereotypical. You got to pour some alcohol on someone getting a tattoo. It's just a beauty thing. Got to sterilize. Which is like whiskey is just the, apparently the first sanitizing liquid we can find. <laughs> Did you ever see the movie? Apply, uh, apply one shot to the skin and eight shots to the stomach. You'll be all right. And call me in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever see uh, Dark Knight? Or yeah, no, not Dark Knight. That's that's the um, Demon Knight. Tales from the Crypt, Demon Knight. There's a lady in there who gets her, she gets her arm ripped off by a demon, right? And uh, what what does uh, Jada Pinkett Smith do? She dumps a bottle of vodka on it. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That's fucked up. It's like uh, World War Z. Remember when he lobbed off the girl's arm and just dumped oh, yeah, the all over it? Yeah, the Mossad soldier. Yeah. I'm sorry, man. I was like, that. that's... Fuck, that's a that's a mind flip on me, man. You know, you're like, I'm gonna turn into a zombie. Sing, no, I don't have an arm. Damn. <laughs> but no. So man. Rico gets in there, whatever. You gotta love the fiddle. I love the fiddle. I love all that stuff. I mean, you know, the last time I saw Busey was in the movie Frighteners with Michael J. Fox. And so I'm like, yeah, wait, well, who was in Shocker? No, that wasn't him. Never mind. All right. So um, now we start meeting up with what's his face? Ironside as Gene. And I love that uh, that little clip here, you know. This is for you new people. I only have one rule. Everyone fights. No one quits. No one fights. No one quits. You don't do your job. I'll shoot you. So. That was after everything, right? When they came back, when he got repaired up and everything, right? Yeah, and like his unit got merged into the Roughnecks, and they were going to what they call it, like Planet B or something. It's like we have an outpost there that's called for help. Yeah, yep. it's just like in Jurassic Park, when uh, Jurassic Park Part Three, where they're like, we're in um, Isla Sorda, not Isla blah 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 or whatever. Yes. But. <clears throat> So let's talk about the outpost. <laughs> well, let's talk about first how hot was it when Gary Busey got decked in the face by the hot chick? <laughs> he goes, I heard you guys were the troll. I love that scene. That was good. No, that scene was pretty great. Yeah. Okay, oh, no, I remember the exact scene. And he's just like, he's like, no, just boom, just, and just get smoked. But, uh, and I, we're not doing this this film enough justice because there's so much in this movie, so much that you could just watch. I thought it was Kirkwood Smith, you know, Red Foreman from that '70s show that did, did the 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 whole propaganda. You know, would you like to know more? I really thought it was him, but it's not. But I mean, it sounds kind of like him, at least to me, it does. But um, no, that was no, always fun. Oh, that would sound like him. Yeah, I mean, I never him. put it together that that might have been him, but. Now that you say that, I I can, I can see why you would have thought that. Yeah, sure. Let me let me. Play now I'm just imagining the narrator for like, would you like to know more? Just saying, dumbass, at the end of everything. Now, <laughs> would you like to know more? Dumbass. <laughs> in the uh, in the general uh, text chat, I put up a picture uh, so you can see what johnny rico's character is supposed to look like and does Jeez, in uh, the Pliskin? now the there there's three pictures here what the first one snake Pliskin. the second one is solid snake who's based on snake Pliskin. the third one is johnny rico who's based on snake Pliskin. oh dude if he looked like that yeah that would totally take the whole movie all three of them Military background, anti-authority sort of attitudes. Uh, Johnny Rico later, not during his coming of age story in Starship Troopers. Mm. All of them scarred up, eye patches, deep gravelly voice. Johnny Rico actually becomes kind of a badass after, uh, like, after some time in the service in the in the story. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially with the subsequent films, like he just. 
walks around with his massive chip on his shoulder because he's like, yeah, I know I'm badass. I know me and my guys kill bugs more than everybody else. Hmm. And he also knows that they're just, you know, meat for the grinder and the government's just using them for propaganda. So it's like a double edged sword. Yeah, Yeah, he's like he's like anti authority, but, you know, I'm going to be too badass to kill. Yep. I think, you know, in his anti authority thing, uh, just speaking on uh, Rico's character development, uh, I actually recently watched a third film and they do the military uh, hierarchy actually does, in fact, sentence him to death. Hmm. And they play it off to where, you know, he's about to get hanged and everything, but he falls through a false trap door and then gets sent back out on this secret mission to drop to use this new planet killing bomb because they find this crazy new planet. They're like, there's another uh, brain bug here. And then it turns out the brain bugs never stop growing. They never stop getting bigger. And about 90% of the weight of this planet, its entire mass, its entire core, everything is just the physical body of this brain bug. Hmm. That's just almost, it's unimaginably enormous. Yeah. And it's when uh, in the third film, they actually go clo- more closely related to the old comics and even some of the old uh, like animated shows they did, like little brief stints of back in the day where they finally bring out the marauder suits which are these like basically like mini gundam suits that are like walking tanks Mm -hmm. they're like 20 feet tall and they just they do nothing but just smoke all the arachnids all the bugs in front of them Uh, when i would i would rather watch that one than the second one the second one was so yeah i was not into it i was actually thinking at one point were these porn stars they put in the movie um, I mean so, that that statement would be technically correct if Sylvester Stallone would have been cast. <laughs> no, it's just like that. She it was like shittier acting, and they made it seem like oh we had our we had our little shit up so we can have stupid dr- dialogue while the bugs. I don't know. So the outpost, they all they are all heading to this outpost or whatever. I don't know, but that's when we first find the flying bugs. Remember, because they pick up the guy and um, Ironside shoots him. He goes, I'd expect you guys to do that for all of us, including me or whatever. Mm. And um, so they get to the outpost. And what did you think, even in the movies theater, even even when I watch this, when you see that herd coming on to the outpost, you're like, nah, they're all fucked. There's no way to survive that. None. They can go hide in that refrigerator that the general was in. They can do that, yeah. <laughs> Maybe unplug it and then jump in. Yeah, that's good. But no, yeah, I mean, I just like that's where it kind of gets like to me. It's like then we care more about Neil Patrick Harris, where he can like you know sense he's like you know start getting more into his psychic shit, and uh, Clancy Brown. You know what? How does he become? Uh, he she, he hit someone, didn't he? To get knocked down to private, did he, who did he hit? We we never really find out what he did. At least in the movie, maybe there maybe it does in the novel or something. But he he gets himself busted down to private just so he can rejoin the fight. Yeah, I love yeah, that. Yeah, they say like he he like he, he's like. Because that one guy, uh, doesn't the commander go, the only way you're going to see action again is if you bust yourself down to private. Yeah, yeah. And then here comes Clancy Brown, like, at, like, the three-quarter of the way mark in the movie. Or, no, 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 he shows up, like, he shows up again within, like, the last five minutes. They're like, yeah, this soldier here crawled down to the hole, nuked the bugs, and, you know, allowed us to capture the brain bug all by himself. And sure shit, it's Clancy Brown. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> because he's dope he's, like that. <laughs> he has the John Goodman role from Arachnid. Yeah. He's, like, he's got seventh billing and he does all the badass shit behind the scenes. You're right. You're right. You know, you know, uh, I'm sorry. We got, we got to have a, you know, this is. Kato, <laughs> you have now made, we just have to have the John Goodman from Arachnophobia. We have to yep. use that for anything. So yes, that's John for, Goodman. You can use that oh. for everything because he, he he had an answer for everything. That's perfect, dude. Because yeah, he did it, and uh, oh my gosh, that ah, oh, 
I hate you because that's perfect. Now I want to look at every damn movie and be like, that's John Goodman. Yep, that's the John Goodman of this movie. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to say something and it's less of a critique on the movie, but it's it's more of a critique on like all these sort like all these like sci fi blockbusters. The enemies are so deadly unless you're a main character, because yes. you see on the, the original drop of the battle Kondathu, you got dudes dump just mag dumping into the bugs and not killing them. But then Rico runs up, does a little seven round burst and the bug just goes and falls over yeah. dead. It's like uh, that one over there. I'm pretty sure he took 300 rounds. This one took 13. Yeah, he's absolutely <laughs> right. Bull bullets are a lot more powerful when you're uh, when you get character. higher. Yeah, when you get higher billing, higher billing yeah. do more damage. And, and you get more like legless agility to blow up big fat tankers with a with a little hand grenade. That was another Star Wars. Either. You that was another reload. Star Wars. Did you see yeah. that? That was another Star Wars. That's Empire Strikes Back. Breaks open the, uh, you know, walker and chucks up the bra the bomb in it. That's a trope. <laughs> we got to have a oh, noise. Absolutely. They, the, the heroes always got to survive. Yeah. Unless it's Game of Thrones, then everybody's dying. Yeah. And you get a Starbucks cup. So. But uh, no, not, we're, we're not going to we are not going to discuss that season. What did you think of the whole Dizzy's death? I fucking hated it. It's a trope in every fucking movie. We need a trope sound. Kato, we need a trope sound. Um, sound. But, uh, huh? You got you to oh, use like, the Pac-Man dying sound. Just oh. There we go. Here's we'll try this. Ah! Trope sound. OK, so okay, there um, we go. So Dizzy, they finally get together. They make some mad, passionate love. They get some baby making going on. And she gets not uh, only stabbed by an arachnid, but like multiple stabs all at once. Like they're making sure she's fucking dead. Well, no one made sure she was dead more than like Rico, because like she's got that big thing sticking out of her. What's the best thing to do right now? Rip it out of her. So mm. they just they just sit there and jerk on it until they rip it out. So she's got this massive <laughs> <she's> like that. <laughs> I'm just like, that's like not feel triage, Rico. This might not sound correct, but if you ever find yourself in a situation with something massive in. stabbing inside you. Um, don't pull out. Don't pull out. <laughs> leave it in. Whatever you do, do not pull out. <laughs> uh, leave it in. Oh, God. I got to hear that. Okay, the word you were looking for was impaled. Impaled. Uh, if you find yourself impaled with anything, don't <laughs> trade pull out. Don't trade it. Really? <laughs> Damn commercials. <laughs> yeah, don't pull out. I got to hear that net noise where it's like, <laughs> oh, God. They. They did so great with the gore, it's like a the cheesy sucking gore. Up pudding. What the? <laughs> Damn. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's get some mac and cheese and a potato masher. Wait, this is oh, sugar memories. Like, get out of here! I got this. When he's trying to blow up shit. Where's Dizzy's death? What is this? get laid tonight by Rico. Woo! Not today. We're going to get impaled by something different. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this shit, dude. You know what we should have done? Ah! Oh, no! Uh, yeah, dude, there's like nine. She got stabbed 9,000 times. Then you hear all the three round bursts eliminating all the bugs. And they're like, yeah. no. Don't die on me! Get over, let's go! Oh, yeah, the cool sliding down. The flamethrowers and those like, other yeah, heavy it? guns when they were dropping on Klandathu. Like, where, where's these mini nuke grenades? Good God. Well, that's dude. Right. You weren't deployed with them because you were meant to die. Yep. Oh, this is fun. We should have watched this movie as we did the show. This would have been better. 
Johnny, I'm Johnny. I'm dying. No. You're going to be all right, Jace. It's all right. Because I got to have you. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's a trope. Right the, new love interest has to, has to, yep, it, the new love interest has to die to send Rico back to Carmen. Yeah. Oh, no. All right. Wait, did he get back with Carmen? What did you say, Angelus? He got interrupted. Um, Of all the scenes in that movie, that is the cringiest. The cringiest? Oh, because of what, how she said it? She's like, she's I got to have you. It was like, she never, I don't it think was, she ever. It was she, a rushed nine minutes in a tent at best. <laughs> and it was interrupted. You know, like, so my side, and then he the goes, make it 15. Seen. Make it, yeah. And he's like, and he was all like, never turn a good thing down, buddy. Like, get your ass in there, because I'm going to interrupt you later. So if you would have started earlier when I told you to. Yeah. It's like he just burst in expecting that Rico's just going to pop his head up and go, oh, yes, sir. Yes, you can join us. Come on in. Oh, snap. Look at my look at my metal hand, lady. Well, just dumb. Maybe maybe look, Rico's look, dick look, is look. just that amazing, and we don't know it. It, is, it, it kills bugs in three bursts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh. man. I don't care. I mean, everybody, like, it was funny. I was talking to Kira about this, and she's like, I hated, I, I, because uh, she's, she's kind of young, and she's like, um, I hated it, that big, you know, vagina bug scene or whatever you want to call it. And uh, she's like, that scared the shit out of me growing up. And I'm like, yeah, did you see how gooey that hole was for the vagina hole? Like, when the stick comes out of it to take out the brain? Yeah, I don't want a stick coming in. It a was anti well know? used. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. The stick was dry, but the hole was just so well used. Yeah. What did you guys think of that? The the practical effects of getting a brain sucked out. I thought that was really good, though. You know, for the budget they were working on, it actually was done pretty darn well. And you know. This does the CGI hold up to anything we have today? No, but for its time, it actually did look bad at all, especially comparing it to the subsequent films. You're like, oh, this looks like it was rendered on a Nintendo 64. What the fuck happened? <laughs> thoughts um now we're on case where we we're on like, what i would say uh that's me oh right okay sorry yeah <laughs> sorry, kyle. sorry kyle kyle i was calling him kyle guitar earlier i was like hey kyle guitar. <laughs> i was like man that would have been a good screen name too because star wars knowledge i am filled with an infinite amount of <laughs> but you know i say for what the filmmakers were actually getting at and granted you know the general you know, the general public that saw it missing the point of the movie, the message it was trying to make, I'd say for what they were trying to make it, it's a satire on militant fascist governments where everybody is just like, oh, yeah, we're all for everything because they, you know, they don't know any better because they've never experienced true freedom or true democracies or anything like that. They hit the nail right on the head of doing exactly what they set out to do to make a sci-fi satire. And... For what it's worth, it actually is a good film. It's got, you know, it's got a great backstory to it as to where it came from. Started out as like articles in a magazine. There was animated shows. There was books based around it and everything. So like overall, I thoroughly enjoyed the film. And not the second one. The second one, I was like, eh, it's too cheesy. But the third one wasn't terrible other than, you know, the CGI. But so, like, all in all, it's an enjoyable movie. I highly recommend anybody that hasn't seen it to see it and to think about the points we've been bringing up and everything like that and look at it for what it is. It's it's a satire. All right. Kato? I think even though, it, like, it is obviously satire, and it's more obvious when you, like, when it dawns on you and you go back and watch it again. Like, when I first seen it, I was a lot younger, so I 
I was a kid. I watched it and I enjoyed it at face value. It wasn't until I was older that, you know, I went back, watched it again, noticed stuff that, you know, I didn't see the first time around. And I like it for different reasons now. I still enjoy the movie. But, like, the soldiers aren't actually the bad guys either. Like, we keep, in this podcast, talking about it, it kept being said, oh, we we started the fight with them. Now, like, the government did, but, like, the soldiers are just the victims in it themselves. Nobody's blaming the soldiers. They're us. We're the ones that join to to fight for citizenship. You Jim know? Palms on a chessboard. Exactly. But overall, I... Uh, I really enjoyed the movie. And jealous? I agree with what the other guy said. That's it. I mean, <laughs> it's a movie I've seen a few times, but it, it's really enjoyable because it actually, I hate to say it, it has a lot of action, but it actually has a really solid plot line in the background. And I love it. It does change uh, based off of what you know about it. So, like, when you watch it and you don't know about uh, the background of the film, rewatch it because it is definitely um, like an ogre. It's an onion. It has layers. <laughs> it really does. It really does. But it's a great uh, piece of uh, film history. I think it's aged well. The special effects might not have, but the story and idea behind it has. I, I think the way the actors portrayed the characters to create the image for it that they wanted kind of made it look like they were acting poorly in some instances where really it was the point to overact or be too serious in different instances. Like when we were talking about the bugs being stomped earlier by the kids and right behind them laughing almost hysterically was this teacher that's like <laughs> who couldn't be more happier at just kids stomping some bugs to death it's like the the whole movie was like that and i kind of wonder if like that hurt any of their careers afterwards because like they all kind of like floundered into like d movie area except for like mm -hmm. some of the background guys you, you can't keep clancy down Clancy yeah. moved on to greater things, but I think like uh, the guy who played Rico, uh, Casper and Denise mm -hmm. Richards, like we didn't really see them in huge things ever again after that. No. Again, just to clarify or not clarify or just to say a lot. So when we're thinking about all the veteran movies or stuff to watch any kind of movie to, to really uh, salute the veterans, uh, when this came up, I, I felt like it just rang a chord best for you know for the show and who we are and how you guys described it the grunt people is where the veterans that's how i proceeded in this movie you know we had to go out or they had to go out and do the job but they got the job done and that's how i was thinking this would be the best way to honor it in a kind of a a light-hearted one instead of like a nice shitty depressing one that everybody remembers what really fucking happened there you know, yeah. more of an, I wanted this to be more of an escape for the veterans if they do listen to the show. And um, yeah, you know, versus taking guys. them down a like a very bad trip down Mender's yeah. uh, memory yeah, lane. PTSD hole. Yeah. So they see Clancy Brown like punching somebody out or hearing about it. They're gonna be like, I, I remember doing that stuff for a tuna sandwich. Woo. But <laughs> yeah, I wanted to be more of a release and escape than, uh, yeah memory of shit so but I've thank enjoyed, you very I've, much Paul I've enjoyed listening to you during this cause like we're, we were doing the show on this movie and throughout it we, we all get to hear you like oh no this is actually much darker than I thought it was <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but no I uh, yeah. so thanks to all of our veterans out there all of the uh, people still in the service, military, active, inactive, all that other stuff. I really hey, if anyone's that. willing to fight for me, your ace is in my book. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Uh, I also like, you know, first responders, all that good stuff, too. Pretty much thanks to anyone who got me where I'm at today. <laughs> Yeah, I'd exactly. like to thank ambulance drivers, nurses, uh, 
DoorDash. Um... <laughs> DoorDash. <laughs> God. Have you seen some of the Karens that uh, DoorDash drivers have to deal with? They should get combat pay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's true. That's true. All right, everybody. Thanks very much for listening to the show. Thanks, everybody, for being on the show. Um, I'm, wait, hold on. Where's my music? There it is. All right. Thank you, everybody, for being on the show. Oh, God damn it. Oh, it's not working like... out right here. Hold on. Let's redo this over again. <laughs> I'm not having a good night at all. Just make sound clips later where you remix things so it sounds like everything worked. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> all right, everybody. Thanks very much for coming on the show. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Please go to the show notes. Check out the uh, all the little links down there. It's help support the show. Go to our website. All that stuff. Go to Facebook. And uh, all right, everybody. Say goodbye. Good night. Good night. I just want to hang with the stars, baby. I just want to fly away up to Mars lately. Been one of them kind of days. I wish that I forgot. I just want to take off and play. It's like an astronaut. Damn it. How come it didn't stop? I wasn't I wasn't going to, but... Okay, this shit's really getting annoying. Tonight, just... Shut up, Kato. <laughs> <laughs>